Hello, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Lockman channel. Uh, it's a lovely evening today, although uh, the sun's probably going to play havoc with this video. Um, I'm down the plot um, and applying nematodes um, and I'm applying the, the one that uh, protects, to some extent anyway, against carrot fly, onion fly and cabbage root fly. And those are the three big pests here on the allotment. So uh, already one of the uh, allotments next door to mine has just lost probably half of their uh, onion crop. And I did notice a little bit of, ca of uh, carrot fly uh, damage on some of my carrots that had been picked all the way through, um, all the way through May. Uh, so it's not really surprising um, that there was a bit of damage on those. But uh, anyway, it's worth it for me to put a bit of uh, protection down. And uh, I thought, well, while I'm here, I'll just take a quick look round and see what we're up to. So we're on Jenny's plot at the moment, and I'll just give you the quick overview. So there we've got some French beans, and we've got some courgettes, and some curry squash, and some butternut squash, and some crown prince squash and some amazing uh, sweet corn that's doing really well interplanted with those and next up i've got my brassicas and onions uh, those are the spring planted brassicas and then these are the summer planted brassicas here um, and then we've got the potatoes and these are charlotte here they're swift there the ones that have died back these are Sarpo Mira and those are Sarpo Kifi and in the pots are just all different sorts of squashes basically and tomatoes things like that so they're potato pots that I've cleared uh, that I've just popped spare plants into as I've gone along and then we've got the apple trees along here which I've just started thinning so let's have a bit more detail so the French beans are doing fantastic now there's plenty on them um, harvested those a few days ago uh, but they need a new harvest again so I'm really pleased with the way those are starting to thicken up as for everybody's these are just this, the um, courgettes are going crazy I literally harvested these yesterday and took everything off it was remotely uh, the right size and now there's about 10 on there. It's ridiculous. Thank goodness we've got lots of people to give them to. The curry squash. Let's have a look. See if we can see any evidence of them. It's a bit difficult to get access, but there they are. There's a few of these in here. They are not doing amazingly. There's only a handful of fruit so far. There's some more in here. Um, still, they're not doing too bad. The butternut squash are not doing as well. Now, somebody once told me that when curry do well, butternut squash don't do very well, and vice versa. And that definitely seems to be the case because, yeah, there you go, look. There's the curry. Not a sausage, really, on the butternut squash at the moment. Um, these are the Crown Prince and there are again a few fruits on these but not a huge amount just some little ones anyway enough of that so basically Curry is a star of the show at the moment and Crown Prince is second Butternut squash is third, but uh, oh well, I suppose uh, courgettes are actually amazing. So, what else have we got? The spring planted brassicas are going absolutely crazy, as you can see. They're bursting out of their cages there now. Um, these are just trying to get that cabbage right, but missed it. Um, These are collets. You want these to grow as tall as possible. More stem, more collets. Um, and yeah, loads of other stuff in there. Loads of um, cauliflowers and everything that are doing really nicely. So these are ones I've just planted, literally like a week ago. 
and I'm pretty much sure now that every one of those has taken and that is really pleasing because in this weather getting the squash to take, getting the uh, brassicas to take is not always easy so I'm really pleased about that I moved a few leeks from one bed to another and they seem to have taken as well you know, light coloured ones they can't see in that sun but again all the leaks have taken filled in a few gaps where I had a the odd failure but the uh, the gap fillers have taken as well so I'm really pleased about those so let's just have a quick look at these sweet corn and they're coming on pretty well I'm surprised how tall they're growing because these are swift and they don't normally grow quite as tall as this not for us anyway but they are growing nicely and just keep giving them a bit of a shake get some pollen down but uh, it's been fairly windy here even though it's been sunny so it's not too bad the onion bed is starting to fall over now and I'm pretty pleased with it I don't know whether you can see but these are the uh, multi sown uh, banana schlots, and you know, they've still got a month growing on them, uh, but they're already a pretty good size. Um, the onions are pretty good in here, um, in fact, everything is looking fairly good, even though it's planted incredibly densely. I actually think the risk might have paid off, and I might get a pretty good crop off that. Now these are, let's have a quick look if I can get inside this bed, are the um, brassicas that I sowed about a month ago and just look at that little sea of nicely established brassica plants so I'm really pleased there's a bit good mix of all sorts in here quite a few weeds but not too bad I only had one loss and I've replanted that so there's lots of um, broccolis in here and um, uh, calabrese, kales, uh, a few collets I had spare but basically a really nice mix so I'm very pleased they have taken really well okay i do ramble on a bit but let's just uh, quickly zip around here because I'm quite pleased to say that these various squashes that i've planted have all established themselves quite well in these pots again given the weather i'm actually really pleased about that and the tomatoes as well seem to all be uh, picking up so that's good um as advised by one of my followers last week I did take the tops off um, these sarfamira that uh, had the worst of the blight you can see some little bits of blighty leaves on here I've not taken the tops off these I've just I'm just taking the leaves off that are the worst affected but the stuff in the ground all seems clear okay let's get to my plot okay so here we are in my plot and here's the overview so polyton is going wild all the beds are doing pretty nicely actually we'll have a look uh, around in a minute peas are pretty much over now the uh, first succession uh, raspberries are coming on now really nice loads of cauliflowers compost is all pretty much done now um, I've got lots of green here to mix in and these two tubs, um, compost bins are empty so I shall be transferring all of this compost over um, I'll do another video of that I think um, and then I'll be leaving it until spring next year so right polytunnel it is definitely cucumber season and I've just got so many cucumbers we just pick them like every day um, 
and we have more the next day and yeah it's pretty impressive I'm loving the cucumbers everybody is um, my favorite by far is uh, femspot uh, tomatoes well we actually start have some starting to uh, color up in here but I've got a pretty nice crop I'm quite, quite pleased as my these are my first polytunnel grown in well my first indoor tomatoes pretty much full stop um, so yeah I'm pretty pleased about that celery is still doing really well and the trumpuccino has kind of stalled a bit now I don't know whether it's not getting enough water not getting enough light I'm not really sure but we've got so many courgettes it doesn't really matter uh, yeah this is the start of the show these little um, cucumber melons I'm really pleased with those all well, these are the courgettes that I just picked off uh, Jenny's plot uh, just the perfect sized ones and uh, yeah I'll do another video just to show uh, the progress that we're making on the harvests and the allotment finances we'll do that um, in a few days time but yeah pretty good quite pleased with these tomatoes all this kind of management of the leaves and cutting them back and all that sort of things all quite new to me so anybody who spots anything that I'm doing wrong yeah please comment so just pop this Malabar spinach in and that is growing really well and the leaves have got such a lovely succulent texture to them can't wait to taste them um, I've actually got a few more uh, seedlings that I planted in there I'm going to grow them up uh, and into the roof of the polytunnel so peppers hmm I'm not really so sure about peppers I don't really know what I'm doing I've watched a few videos but um, I mean they're growing but some of them have been rotting and you know I'm not really sure why I'm just getting like little brown patches on the peppers some kind soul uh, popped the uh, hose pipe on at the um, tap on and the hose pipe just flooded out of my barrel so uh, it's full to the brim now right so what was I saying oh yeah so um, some of these peppers just seem to be rotting um, can't see it on any of them now because I've taken them off but uh, anyway there's the peppers so I'm watering them each morning um, sort of two or three seconds of water um, not a huge amount so they're not completely kind of waterlogged I don't know whether that's right anyway that's them courgettes these are my early courgettes these are done now pretty much you can see there's nothing growing on them uh, anything that is look is really feeble and just sort of dropping off so it's not watering yeah, I think it's just exhausted this plant um, as I said this was a one that served as well providing early courgettes uh, that was grown in the polythorn so I've got replacements at home which are going in these pots uh, once the pots have been replenished a bit and they will go back in the polytunnel in kind of September time so how can I tell you about this but these beds so uh, let's just talk about some failures so this is the biggest failure look at that spring onion bed that's a real disaster got about less than half of what uh, a decent crop would be out of that um, basically just all shriveled up and died um, so that is not good um, I am pretty much managing to keep these lettuce beds alive um, they do look pretty nice but the problem is the lettuce is not growing so I'm kind of harvesting it 
and then it's not regrowing. It's just too hot for the lettuce to grow. So that is going to be a bit of a challenge for me. I have that bed and this bed here that's pretty much untouched. But uh, some of these other beds that I've harvested, you know, like last week I harvested this one. You can't really see it very well, can you? Um, but uh, yeah, not much, not much recovery on it. It's not looking great. So uh, anyway, we'll see. As I say, it's not water, it's just heat. Other than that, everything's going really nicely. The, the beans are coming on beautifully. Uh, we're getting a stack of beans off here. You can see all these lovely beans in here. We're really happy with those. Sweet potatoes are chugging along. Tomatoes, she's starting to get decent uh, harvest every day. We took about six or seven off here yesterday. And you can see there's quite a lot uh, ripening up again. So uh, yeah, quite pleased with those. They're the first ones. I've got some uh, yellow little, little ones here that'll be ready tomorrow. Um, yeah, that's all doing great. Beetroot's doing great. Calabrese is doing well. The cabbages are all doing well. These onions. These are the multi sown onions. Still quite small. But they've got a while to go yet. And we want them small. And I'm sure I've mentioned it many times. But we actually want smaller onions this year than last year. We found the big ones split a bit. Um, and they were just too big anyway. So we didn't get through... Um, one a day and so we ended up with half an onion in the fridge um, left it maybe for two days much better just to use a whole onion every day much better so that's the strategy for this year peas are doing beautifully these are the aldermans and uh, yeah just gorgeous and as i say this succession of aldermans is finished i've just been eating them and leaving the husks on here but as I say, they're, they're, these are not great quality now, so there's only a few left. Um, so they're going to go in the compost. Next bed of carrots coming on well. I've just planted another bed of carrots in here. I've just taken the shade netting off. Uh, it was just in time because you can just see the carrots coming through now. So I'm quite pleased with that. There's not full germination in here yet, but... Uh, Hopefully in a few days time, that will be looking much better. And I'm also pleased to see that the uh, shade net has come off the beetroot and all the beetroots are coming up nicely as well. So I'm pretty pleased about that. I have got emergencies in modules, but at this time of year, I prefer to grow them in the ground because no transplant shock. And when it's as wet as this, I really want to avoid transplant shock. This is my summer carrot bed, the one that we'll be harvesting uh, through the summer and I'm very pleased with it, really really pleased with it. This is just kind of like a little spare bed that I popped in. I um, wasn't really sure what I was going to use it for but it's actually proved really productive and uh, yeah onions down the middle. And we've got lots of cauliflowers in here, this is my summer brassica bed i.e. these are brassicas that will be all harvested in the summer um, and then get replanted some still got some calabrese in here and um, purple uh, cauliflowers white cauliflowers and the like so that is pretty much it i think for my plot let's quickly go look at those so here's the overview I'm trying to keep the sun off the camera and it's looking pretty good very pleased that we've actually still got decent red kale on this plot because the stuff on Jenny's plot has gone to seed. I'm a big believer in diversifying so we have bits of everything on all of the plots so you know, almost all the baskets are on Jenny's plot but we've got little bits on my plot little bits on um, Debbie's plot just in case you know just in case we get a really bad attack of white fly on one for example or cabbage root fly on one just uh, means we don't have a di complete disaster and uh, there we go beautiful kale a bit more sweet corn here 
some uh, collets here, New Zealand spinach here. I had to take one of my beds of New Zealand spinach up, it just wasn't thriving. So uh, pop those beetroots in. Here we go, some, another succession of um, alderman peas, beautiful those, ready for eating. Some more French beans here and some runner beans uh, as well and then some more alderman peas and these are the claret broccolis fantastic in spring for a long time to wait and some more kale under that little thing there but this is the start of the show here just look at these these are banana shallots and they are giant they're uh, multi-sown from seed um, I'm really pleased with them so I'm growing pretty much all of my onions from seed now and um, just gives me more sense of satisfaction um, and the kind of benefit is that if the seeds do well that's fine but if there's a disaster then I can always pop some sets in but uh, yeah I always start with seeds if I can Debbie's been harvesting vast quantities of black currants. There's still loads and loads and loads on these bushes. Just uh, such a big job to pick them all, and I hate picking them all. I don't like black currants anyway, so it's up to Deb. Fruit trees are fine. Still got a few uh, broad beans. I um, just planted my broad beans for autumn and uh, they're just germinating now a bit of black fly but nothing much to worry about another succession of sweet corn here and uh, fruit trees all doing well cabbages are doing nicely down there yep so I think that's enough for Debbie's plot it's all looking pretty good just quickly back in the polytunnel and I got these two beds spare now so this had radishes and beetroot in it and this one had early brassicas in it um, so I popped some uh, celery at both ends uh, and this will replace the celery that I've got over there in, in this bed and at the other end um, but I've been really pleased with these baby carrots. They're just so crisp and tender in the polytunnel. So both of these beds now are baby carrots. And I'm hoping these will be all out by mid-September, which is a bit of a risk, but hopefully they'll grow fat slightly faster in the polytunnel uh, than outside. So they've got about 75 days or something like that. And then probably something like spinach or lettuce uh, we'll go in here in mid to late September uh, from plugs and so yeah by then all those baby carrots should be out and that means all the carrots that I've got um, in the ground now I can leave for winter which should give me a really good winter supply I'll just give you a quick update on this mylar sheeting that I've got up in the roof it's been splendid it's kept the temperature in this polytunnel is really well under control. Sits at about 85 to 90 uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, what's that? I don't know, maybe 32 or something, is it? Um, centigrade, and yeah, that's fantastic because otherwise it would be way up above 100 um, and stuff wouldn't be doing so well. And of course, everything kind of gets the sun from here and from here so there's still plenty of sun getting in it's just all the baking heat that would come down the center here at midday it still comes down at midday at the sides but everything gets reflected out at midday so the worst of the heat and uh, gets out of here but it's still plenty warm <laughs> but uh, yeah so much better and you can see I've got my seat here as well uh, it's actually possible to sit in here at midday and it's actually quite pleasant so that's amazing right so with that i'll say goodbye and see you soon 
Uh, if you like this video, it'd be great if you could comment. Uh, and if you really like it, it'd be great if you could subscribe and then you'll get to watch more updates like this. Uh, next video is going to be an update on the allotment finances. See you soon.